All right, great, thank you. Okay, so I'm actually here on behalf of Susan Keenley's side, our program coordinator, and I'm actually wearing my instructor hat today. Um, so I'm about to present to you the, uh, the BIM Lifecycle Management Program uh, that we have here. It's an Ontario College Graduate Certificate here at the college. Uh, it's one year uh, with two semesters broken down by uh, just shy of one week where we have an actual practicum at the end of each semester. So without further ado, uh, the previous knowledge and experience required of most of these candidates is actually some background in architecture, engineering, and construction. So they definitely have to be coming from either an architecture background, one of the engineering disciplines, uh, a technologist background, something of the same or comparable. Um, and they also have to have some project delivery experience. So having some experience with industry already. Uh, and lastly, they have to know a little bit about BIM authoring, which, you know, whether it's the SketchUp version or uh, an intermediate Revit user, um, there's a range and the expectation is they do know a little. So we launched in the fall of 2017 and the whole goal, the vision, was that there were going to be a, a series of complex sort of mimicking industry actions and activities that were consistently redone throughout the semester and throughout the year to provide the students multiple opportunities to simulate non-typical situations that might happen in industry, especially in BIM, which is where we all, anyone in the BIM industry, uh, finds the surprises that can be challenging to deal with at times. So the overall goals, I has, as I had just mentioned, was the obviously the practical application focus, uh, but it was also you know, not contributing to BIM washing, not further uh, deepening some of the misunderstandings around application of BIM, not just to design and construction, but to life cycle of an asset or life cycle of a city or even the life cycle of the information rather than the asset or the city. Uh, and again, making sure that critical thinking uh, was something that we were hammering into the students in every aspect where we'll break down the actual five sort of streams in a little bit here, but uh, making sure that they understood that just because, you know, for example, there was one camp of software that could do one specific action or meet one specific need or goal uh, doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be the future of that particular need or BIM use. So we had quite a range of topics to cover. Um, and obviously within lifecycle management, there's a lot of different definitions, interpretations that actually clash with what we consider BIM in the design and construction world. Uh, you know, for example, uh, in my day job with Public Services and Procurement Canada, we have everything from BIM data clashing with financial data and actually with existing conditions and heritage data, as you saw earlier in Lara's presentation. So we had everything in terms of the gamut of life cycle available information that really should all speak in the same language and does not at all and not well at all. Uh, so obviously dealing with these multiple use cases and information exchanges at the bigger scale than just architecture or engineering or construction was really important for these graduates that they be able to uh, apply what they know, obviously from their background in architecture and engineering and construction, but apply it at a larger scale. That if they were hireable, they would be hireable anywhere in the information lifecycle chain. Uh, and ideally suited to be able to manage that, the information exchanges, uh, the interoperability, and specifically the use of BIM to meet the goals of the organization they were placed in. So part of the focus was on data and information management, but the other part was obviously the multidisciplinary roles that all these, uh, you know, if you follow the, the life cycle linearly, what that would look like versus if you look at it as an iterative cycle that we go through a few times within our industry. And the big one was really clarifying what some of the meanings behind these things were. And so therefore we kind of broke down into a few streams. Um, the framework approach was the one that Susan and Eric, when they were first sort of conceiving the vision for this uh, program, uh, started with. So the, the five streams uh, started with fundamentals. What are the basics that everyone should know about BIM as it is uh, applied to all sectors, not just design and construction? Uh, what are the tools and technology available in each of the major life cycle phases rather than breaking into a silo where we're meeting a design and construction need? Uh, workflow and collaboration, so being able to get between non-standard pairings of software and tools and technologies and equipment. Uh, standards and guidelines, which is my uh, class. 
I got the most boring one, of course. Uh, just kidding. I try to make it fun. Uh, not. <laughs> And standards and guidelines really focuses on being able to replicate the same process more than once and to understand some of the general industry trends in this area, both here in Canada and abroad, uh, and being able to authoritatively discern between the options that are out there. Obviously, we're all familiar with some of the um, approaches that are being taken in our various industries, uh, whether in architecture or in the engineering camps for analysis, things like that. Uh, and no firm does it quite the same as another. And this is one of those things that I'm not sure how much standardization is really needed versus whether or not we can just simply standardize certain pieces to make sure that it's more efficient for everyone. Um, last stream being project definition and deliverables. One of the most key uh, components that we were finding were missing and was obviously a graduate need was being able to define uh, BIM for a project, not just the design, but full range. Uh, and obviously to define what a deliverable meant uh, from either interpreting a request for proposal or interpreting contractual requirements or even just interpreting the needs of a project. And then finally, the last week of every semester is a culminating Blitz collaborative project. So I'm just gonna go ahead here. So the framework approach, obviously, uh, breaking it down again, um, but the fundamentals focused on the principles. And as I had mentioned, the tools and technologies focused on the tools Workflow and collaboration focused on the processes, uh, standards and guidelines, the standards, and finally the deliverables being the outcomes. Uh, and this followed a very similar approach to the way that Building Smart Canada's international um, standards framework uh, was laid out. And then obviously, finally, the practicum. So obviously the framework was paramount because it doesn't change over time, but the content of each of the classes does. So for example, my class, uh, second semester last year, focused on the creation of a roadmap and a strategy. This year we're doing scan to BIM standards and documentation and specifications to go along with that. So every year it's a little bit different in terms of the content, but the end goal is always the same. And what we ended up with was a, what we would like to think as a very innovative and new program approach where uh, we focused on what the industry's needs are on any specific year um, and try to meet that meeting our outcome for the, uh, the students. So industry partners that get invited to these BIM blitzes are typically those that are either involved in one of the collaborative projects for the semester for any of the specific classes. So this is typically uh, either someone that one of the instructors is working with uh, in their day job, or for example, an organization that's approached us with a challenge uh, that the students might be able to meet. And it's all about putting the pressure on and making sure that this is simulating a real world experience where deadlines are tight and uh, you know, your word is gold. So the five day intensive is obviously mimicking real world scenarios and the student graduates, I think the first time around, definitely are nervous, but by the second one, I think they've got themselves handled, which is great. It's always great to see. And what it does is it kind of forces a balanced approach, uh, partly between software skills and technology, which is sort of the expectation of every BIM specialist but also in the project and facility management realities. We're trying to ba balance not just sort of that um, academic approach, research-based approach, but also finally um, being able to really handle something that is a current uh, and pressing problem in industry each year. So as an example, the digital campus project here at the college uh, was to implement applied learning for the terrestrial laser scanning and BIM modeling from point cloud data. Uh, my particular class is working on the standards pieces of that. Tools and Technologies was looking at some of the processing and the tools of that. Project definition and deliverables were looking at creating um, project execution plans, defining deliverables. So it was all sort of a little bit uh, blended. Um, and right now, we're actually collaborating with the Technical Writing Program, which is a program here at Algonquin that focuses around getting documentation from an IT sector or from an architecture and engineering company and actually creating something that is extremely user experience driven rather than being focused on a standard or a policy. It's something that is very consumable and helps, you know, obviously uh, the masses, the audience with profiling what level of understanding they're at. This is something that we expect a lot of the graduates will have to deal with uh, in their, their future uh, lives in the profession where essentially um, at some point they're going to have to be able to replicate a process they've created. And how do we communicate that effectively? Um, another example was the Blitz uh, session showcasing industry advancement. 
And we had a few very interesting project uh, teams come in and speak about their very specific approach, how they handled project challenges, um, and essentially were very transparent and very willing to collaborate with us, which was great. So just an introduction to the faculty team. Obviously, I'm here representing Susan Keenly side, who's our program coordinator, currently working for the House of Commons. Uh, Kirk Stocky, uh, who's also here as the uh, executive director of the uh, Nash Digital Built National Capital Region. I'm still getting used to saying that. <laughs> and Patrick Willone of Ellis Dawn, Antonia Bolhosep of uh, HOK, Brent Maudi of IBI, uh, Nicholas Arleno of uh, Sims, Alexander Stevanovich of uh, the Construction Research Center here at Algonquin, uh, Rika and myself, who both work at Public Services and Procurement Canada. So if anybody is interested in joining the faculty, we're always getting bigger. We have plans for uh, professional certification courses. We have plans also for a second year um, of specialization, more on the modeling and less on the management of BIM. Uh, and lastly, obviously, becoming an information manager for a specific area or discipline. So project manager, uh, architect, etc. Um, and we do this, obviously, through our program advisory committee, uh, which we all very much would like to see more people attending and contributing to. So the program advisory committee is obviously meant to represent industry and uh, distill the messaging coming from industry regarding what are the real challenges that they're finding in getting uh, skilled uh, people. How, what are they finding are the real gaps when they interview new people in BIM? or are looking for a skilled person in BIM? What do they expect as hitting the ground running, uh, et cetera? And acting as an industry partner means they're actually giving some input to the direction of the program, which was very beneficial in our case because we were being shaped by some of the major players here in the National Capital Region. And we also ask sometimes that they practice in the Blitz. So this is one of the origins of some of the Blitz themes that have come through in the last uh, year and a half. And uh, again, providing project examples. So we're always receiving models, which is great uh, from project partners uh, who are able to share with us so that we can actually use a real world, real built model that simulates exactly what we're going to come across in uh, industry and private sector, which is you're not gonna know who built the model and how it was built necessarily when you first see it. Um, so this is all uh, very important to us and Susan did ask me to express that if you wanted to collaborate you did want to sit in on one of these uh, at least come to one and send her an email and ask we'd be more than happy to have you uh, and finally application information so if anyone in the crowd is interested in taking uh, the courses or in finding out more about the professional certifications that we're eventually going to be putting in uh, this is where you can find it we're also on Facebook and Instagram so take a look and I think Susan just wanted to highlight that we are the number one lifecycle management BIM program in Google right now. Very innovative. So thank you on behalf of Susan and of the faculty. And I hope anybody who wants to ask any questions approaches me anytime. <laughs>